Thank you, Peter. And first off, thank you to the chambers, both the central chambers and Port Hope chambers, for putting on this breakfast. Uh, we did want to try and uh, be as close to the budget as possible, but this is really close. <laughs> and uh, and uh, because my wife didn't come to Ottawa with me and drive me back, I didn't have a, I haven't had a long time to digest everything. So if you, at the end, we're going to have a Q and A. And if I'm unable to answer your specific question, I, uh, I will tell you that uh, between the Chamber and uh, Stephanie, we'll, uh, we'll get you the answer that, uh, that you deserve. Uh, budgets, uh, in and of themselves, will have people that like them and people that don't like them. Uh, the media people that don't like them are usually the opposition, and, and that's fair. And that's, you know, if we were the opposition, we'd be saying bad things about it too. But the real people, uh, the real people who count are the people who uh, will be affected by it, and that's Canadians in general right across the board. And, and in particular, the Chambers of Commerce, who are the where the lifeblood of our communities, the, the people who run the small and medium-sized enterprises, the people that uh, you represent as chambers, and you in particular, who are business people, you're the, you're the, you're the sort of the engine, as I mentioned, that runs our economy, uh, and of course the families that work with you and for you uh, are of course an integral part of that. So we want to make sure that the budget uh, has in it. Uh, things that make sense to you, things that make uh, your ability to garner a, a, a good living. As I always say, profit's not a bad word to me, it's actually a good word. Uh, and so we want to make sure that our economy stays healthy. We are in troubled times. No one can, you have to not read a newspaper or watch television or listen to the radio to realize that the world is in some parts of the world are not in very good shape. The current problem in Europe is Cyprus, of course, uh, but we have the European economy that is, uh, with the exception of, uh, of Germany, is not uh, doing the best. Uh, and that's why we're probably going to strike a free trade agreement if we can just get a couple of, there's just a couple of things that are irritants right now, uh, but we're working those out. And I spoke to Minister Bast and uh, we're still optimistic that within the next short while we'll be able to sign an agreement. We also have, of course, of great interest to many of our manufacturers and people who want to do business in China. We now have an agreement with China, a financial agreement. They respect uh, our, uh, our laws concerning business and enterprise. Uh, and so we're treated fairly in their country according to their laws and vice versa. Uh, and uh, that has been widely uh, praised by the business community in Canada. We will probably, uh, our free trade, uh, free trade negotiations with Japan are moving along much faster than we, than we anticipated. And uh, so uh, we hope to have some good news there. Uh, the Japanese are, are telling us that uh, there's a, uh, to use the word, of some very uh, optimistic people, there's a flood of uh, a foreign investment from Japan that's just waiting to happen if, we, if and when we strike that deal, and I think it's just a matter of when. But we're here to talk about the budget, and so I'll start out, you know, I could go through, there's, it's ra rather lengthy, it's about a 450 page budget, but I've just ri written some notes here, some highlights, you might say, with regard to the budget, and I must say that uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, the, the, the national arm of the Chamber of Commerce, their, their uh, submission to the government, to the Finance Committee, their number one, number one ask was that we uh, maintain our commitment, as did all during the last election political parties, to, uh, to have a balanced budget by about 2015, 2015, 2016, and the Finance Minister says that we're on track to do that, halfway there, as he put it. When we talk to the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses, about a third of their 106,000 members said that skills training and, and, and they have many jobs that are available uh, for skilled labor and they're, they're desperately shy of adequate skilled labor. And so in this budget, building on previous budgets that dealt with uh, skills training, the, the Canada Skills Grant, and that's providing $15,000 or more per person 
a uh, combination of federal, provincial, and territorial, uh, uh, and the employer funding uh, Canadians to get this, the, the skills and the jobs they need. About a little over $2 billion goes to uh, the province currently for skills training and development. So we're taking some of that money. One of the complaints to me in my offices and right across Canada to MPs and to finance committees is that uh, from the people who actually receive the training, that yes, I took the training, but I don't have the job. So we still want to maintain those trainings both through uh, the colleges and universities through, through, uh, and through the private sector who, who, as far as I'm concerned, some of the colleges there do a, an excellent job uh, in partnering with the province and provinces and federal government in training. But we are trying to take another, another step, sort of a an additional step and so we're saying to employers if you are if you want to hire a person if you have the specific skills uh, for instance in our in our budget nego uh, our budget consultation process in Northumberland a manufacturers association who represented at that time the Quinty as well as the uh, as well as the Kawartha manufacturers association I asked them what what skilled job do you need most? And they said, we need welders. So this is an opportunity for businesses that need welders uh, to marry up and, and to receive a grant from the federal provincial governments uh, and, and to put some skin in the game. And so uh, this will, I believe, be of great benefit. And I could go through a long list of, of organizations that say this is a good move. And there's a few that, of course, say not. But the vast majority think it's moving in the right direction. Of course, we're strengthening our apprenticeship system, making it easier to gain experience for journeyman status, and we'll be negotiating with the provinces to look at apprenticeships right across Canada and make sure it work. To try to have a unified uh, apprenticeship recognition program right across Canada, and we believe that's attainable. We're already apparently in negotiations with the provinces in that regard. And uh, through supporting job opportunities by providing tools to persons with disabilities, youth and aboriginals, and recent immigrants to help them find a job. One of the other organizations that, uh, and we had that almost every, as a matter of fact, I think it was with the exception of Camelford, but uh, when municipal leaders did come to our uh, budget consultations, they said we need long-term, two big asks, uh, a reinvestment in the, uh, in the uh, Build Canada Fund <coughs> for needed infrastructure, and the other was looking at that permanent, what we made permanent, and that's the gas tax. And they said, it's going to actually be less and less to us as time goes on because it's not tied to inflation. Uh, so what we've done is we've tied the gas tax in, into uh, <coughs> uh, to inflation, and um, I was reading a statistic somewhere where that will mean somewhere in the vicinity of six billion additional dollars for the infrastructure. For research and innovation, uh, I, you know, in our budget consultations, I provided a graph that shows where Canada, among the industrialized country, invests more in research and innovation than any other country uh, in the G7. And one of the top in the G20. Uh, what we did find uh, on studying is we're not getting enough commercialization. So as we, as we move towards that, we're continuing to support uh, world-class research and innovation. And innovation, uh, providing increased funding for research through uh, uh, federal uh, research granting councils, colleges, and polytechniques, as well as Genome Canada. Genome Canada. Is very important to the agricultural industry. Supporting business innovation by helping businesses invest in innovation to make them more competitive and creating more high paying jobs in Canada. Those high paying jobs are usually the skilled jobs. And I use the, I use the uh, example of one of my hunting buddies. He owns a fire suppression business in eastern Ontario. Uh, he is a proud unionized shop. He pays his pipe fitters $40 an hour plus benefits, and most of them, he says, he knows because he pays into their pension plan, will be retired by 52 or 56 years old. He too has, uh, on occasion, problems finding. He's had one of his best years ever in the last year, 
and he's having problems finding uh, qualified help uh, when he gets jobs. And his jobs are right across uh, eastern Ontario, right from I believe ACL in uh, Chalk River, right through down to the Fixed and Ottawa areas. So very important uh, this this investment in in creating Canada Skills Grant. And he's going to be the guy that I'm going to talk to to make sure that uh, what we're doing is the right thing because he is not afraid to tell me exactly what he thinks. Uh, we're enhancing Canada's venture capital system by fostering entrepreneurial talent and ideas, promoting an entrepreneurial culture in Canada, and supporting youth enterprises. We're supporting families to enhancing a new tax relief for families adopting a child and for those using home care services, making baby clothes and sports equipment tariff free. I had uh, I just happened to watch the news last night shortly after I got in from Ottawa and they were talking about uh, about the uh, tax on sporting equipment. And they uh, interviewed a gentleman from Eastern Canada who had I think 20 outlets in Eastern Canada selling hockey equipment. And for those of you who may have kids uh, in sports, in particular hockey, or you have to buy them skates, especially if they're growing every other year, um, it can be pretty expensive. And this, this gentleman, uh, using his interview, said that if you were outfitting your son or daughter who was a goalie, uh, this could mean a savings of up to $200 for his estimate. I have some examples uh, that we'll be happy to give you should you wish. And uh, just to let you know that the budget, and the budget in particular for Ontario, we'll be putting that on our website. Of course, the finance department will have it on their website. But if you have any questions in particular after today, we'll uh, be sure to get back to you uh, and uh, answer your questions. Because there's, uh, there's a, it's, I'm going to say, a 450-page budget that, uh, that uh, we need to be able to digest. We mean me. Investing in communities, nearly $1.9 billion over five years to create more affordable housing and to get combat homelessness. Introducing a new temporary first-time donor, uh, donor super credit to encourage charitable giving. Uh, there are two items that I, I saw very important. We were very fortunate to have, as far as I'm concerned, one of the, best, the world's best uh, providers of uh, of reasonably priced housing for those people who need it most and that's our habitat for humanity. And so what we're doing with our skills, our skills training, we're saying that if you want to volunteer, if you're a young person in high school or anywhere else, you want to volunteer for habitat for humanity. Of course if you've taken part in a build or you know that organization, they have qualified people, uh, carpenters, plumbers, electricians. So if you help those hours and that time and that training will go towards you uh, being able to get your journeyman's license. So I guess you might say we're helping Habitat uh, get more, hopefully, more people to volunteer for the bill, and we're rewarding those people for that kind of volunteer service by giving them something that really means something, and that's uh, working towards getting that, uh, getting that journeyman's license. And for the new super donor, well, if, uh, I think we've all in the our hospitals. You know, Campbellford Hospital hopes to uh, have a balanced budget, uh, but we know that Northumberland Hills Hospital is struggling. And one of the ways they're able to raise enough money to operate that fine institution, a place that you know we need to go and we have uh, uh, help our, ourselves or our family, uh, this new super credit is designed to get the to get the younger people or someone who has never really. Uh, contributed to charitable to a charitable organization. This is to uh, make it more advantageous and to get them into the habit of donating, uh, of donating and seeing the benefits of donating. Not only the real benefits and seeing uh, whether it's the United Way, whether it's a hospital or other uh, charitable institutions, sort of getting us into the habit of, of uh, donating to charity, uh, supporting and honoring veterans. I won't go into the politics of this except to say that uh, currently uh, under the program, under the funeral and burial program for our veterans, uh, the government contributes about $3,600. I recently met, uh, recently, for the past five years I've been meeting with legions and veterans representatives who say <clears throat> this is one area 
Well, that means yes in our previous budgets. In previous budgets, we've been incre incrementally increasing services to our benefits, the VIP program and other programs. And the last group of people I met were the people who provide funeral services of their, sort, their national organization. Uh, and they actually, uh, God bless them, were subsidizing some of the veterans' funerals because they care. Because our funeral uh, providers and funeral services care. So the government uh, contributes $3,600. It's, it's somewhat means tested. Uh, and sometimes there's just no additional dollars available. In some cases, Legions who can afford to were subsidizing, but in many cases the funeral industry itself was subsidized. So we looked at that, even though they're tough times, and we doubled it and uh, are actually meeting their request. And if I remember correctly, they I said their actual cost was a little over six thousand dollars. So we're closer to seven, I think. But it was over six, <coughs> and so we doubled that to seven thousand three hundred. Uh, Seventy-six thousand dollars. We're strengthening opportunities for long reserve economic development, improving safety for Aboriginal peoples, enhancing health care services on reserve. We're putting more money towards housing on reserve. We're putting more money towards uh, fresh and uh, great water. Uh, and we're also looking at uh, uh, training and apprenticeship opportunities for First Nations people. We're providing tax relief for manufacturers, a $1.4 billion tax relief through a two-year extension of the temporary accelerated capital cost allowance for new machinery and equipment. And once again, during our budget consultations, the Manufacturers Associations from this area, uh, that was one of their asks. And uh, the other ask I'll be getting to in a moment. Uh, the hiring, uh, helping small business expand with $225 million to extend and expand the temporary hiring credit for small businesses for one year. This has been a huge take up. Uh, the Minister of Finance, uh, when we had our budget consultation, we presented what, uh, the information from uh, the input we had from our, uh, from our constituents in our budget, uh, uh, budget planning. Um, that was one of our big asks, and, and he admitted that it was one of the uh, one of the items in the previous in the previous budget that was, that had a large take up, and so we're continuing. For in, uh, we've increased our lifetime capital gains exemption, 110 million dollars over five years, by increasing lifetime capital gains exemption uh, to 800 thousand dollars in 2014 for small business owners, farmers. And of course, fishers. We don't have too many, and we're indexing that uh, the new limit to inflation. This is tremendously important for many of you whose small business. That's your RSP uh, and your ability to, uh, to, uh, to when you're ready to retire, to be able to retire in relative. You know, the payback is your investment in your small business. But in particular, uh, this has also a lot to do with our farming community. We know that the age of our farming farmers is somewhere in the vicinity of mid uh, mid 50s. Uh, so they're thinking of retiring, uh, and many of their farms uh, are have increased in value. The increase in value has more to do with the land than anything else. Uh, and so one of their asks was 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 this as well as small businesses, but in particular when we met with uh, with the farming community, the capital gains was a, was a huge issue to them, and we were trying to meet that. And of course, the $100 million to extend the 15% mineral exploration tax credit. Many of you would say, well, what does that have to do with North Carolina and the West? Actually, it has a lot to do because there are those of us who believe, and I think that belief is widely held, that the Ring of Fire in Northern Ontario will mean to Ontario what the oil sands means to Alberta. And so we want to continue that mineral exploration in Ontario uh, because it has a huge potential of creating the wealth that we need. And a lot of businesses here in the riding uh, benefit by the oil sands exploration. I can think of some businesses, one of them was a boiler manufacturer, where he manufactures things for uh, boilers for, for various purposes, in particular the oil sands. And 80% of his production, the last time I talked to uh, the owner of that business, <coughs> directly to the oil sands. So I'm thinking, and, and extrapolating on that, I think the Ring of Fire has a huge potential 
for businesses in this riding. And this will go a long way, this, uh, this uh, riding and the $100 million uh, for the mineral ex uh, exploration tax credit will go a long way to encouraging more investment uh, in the Ring of Fire. And we remain on track to balance our budget <coughs> by budget year 2015-2016. And I won't go into some of those details. Uh, what I, I guess I'm getting close to that 15 minutes. Am I pretty close to it? I, 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 made, I made a commitment to just speak for 15 minutes and open it up to question and answer because uh, that's where uh, I can talk you know, for quite some time. And I may not be talking about the things that you uh, that are important to you. So uh, at this point, once again, thank you for getting up early, as Peter says, and, uh, uh, and coming out to the budget consultation process. Uh, you will notice I see uh, my friend pointing to the employment statistics. Uh, I'd be pleased to talk about that to any other wish to do that. So open to questions and answers. <laughs> to it, but uh, there are there have been preliminary uh, preliminary uh, talks concerning that. As I as I mentioned, we're not uh, there's still money available to the traditional training. So private colleges and university people like yourself and one of those businesses will still be able to provide that kind of training. But one of the complaints from the people who actually were getting training is yes, I'm, I'm trained, but I don't have a job. Uh, and if I and I'm going to be Frank and up and up front with you all. I talk to many employers, and they say I would hire somebody if they want to work. There are a lot of people looking for if you want to work. This is our way of saying to that employer, okay, if that's the case, if you're willing to uh, to if you find somebody that you want to hire, here's five thousand dollars from the federal government, five thousand dollars from the provincial government, and you've got to put some skin in the game too. Because you're asking, you know, you're asking the taxpayer to take a chance on that hire that you're hiring. It's a heck of a lot more than there is today, because there is no program to fit that particular scenario. So you're right; it isn't the answer to everything, but it's a change in the direction we're going. If it doesn't work, then we'll work. We'll get something that does work. But uh, sort of the definition of, of insanity is doing the same thing. Uh, many times over and expecting a different result. So what we want to do is, yes, we're getting some good results, especially when the private sector gets in there and does some training. I think the private sector does a better job than the government uh, And there's extra money in there for those of you who may be associated with, uh, with some of our colleges and back at CJEPS uh, and universities because there's money in there uh, to help them develop more training. And I forget, I forget the exact amount. I can look it up here. Uh, so there, so we, so what we've done is we've built. We're, we're trying to build on what we the existing, the existing programs and bring in a new program and see see how it works. And you're right, Kim. It is a chance, uh, but to not 
take a chance. That's what business people no, do all the time. No, I just wanted to the, the discussion about yeah. how that was going to be determined because uh, if I'm if I'm working well, that will be in the budget. That will okay, be in the you know the that, when you to follow. That's right because because the provinces may have may have particular things that they would like in their particular province or or so. So yes, but but you need to do something by not needing to you know as I said. Uh, the devil, you, you're right. Devil's in the details, so we're going to give it a try. I think it's, I think it matches some of the, uh, some of the complaints we had before. Like I, at the risk of repeating, you know, the people who the complaint from employers <coughs> that they're having a tough time. I mean, the Canadian, uh, the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses, one third of their membership identified the, uh, they were unable to fulfill job opportunities in their businesses. Uh, and, uh, and this is a way of saying, okay, we're identifying that, we're going to work with you on that, and here's your chance to, uh, here's your chance to put a little skin in the game, as it were. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Mark, I'm from the Cumberland CFTC. I uh, see on page 7 that um, the Eastern Ontario Development Program has been reviewed, and I uh, wanted to say thank you from, from the CFTC's perspective. But I know that it's um, a program that supports uh, small business, medium business, large business, specifically in Northumberland County. And I just wanted to ask you if you could talk a little bit about the renewal of that program. Well, thank you very much. Excuse me. Um, as you know, one of the, at our budget consultation uh, here in Northumberland, we had it at the Way has a, a food bank as well as your offices. Mm -hmm. And one of the asks, not just from the people who work at CFTC, but a lot of the people who have received benefits from it. In other words, your investments in them uh, said you've got to keep uh, the CFTCs, the program, and you've got to keep TOVP. Uh, we brought that message to Ottawa. Uh, in the past, the, uh, the funding for the, the, this particular program has been one or two years. We were fortunate in one of the budgets to get a three year. This is a five year. I think this is sort of moving towards a base fund, which is what I think we all want. We see the benefit day in and day out. Uh, I, I extol the virtues of our CFDCs wherever I go. We have a stellar organization that does many good things. There are many people who I don't think we would be as successful a community from a business perspective and from a hiring perspective if it wasn't for the input that the CFDCs have, the mentoring, the, the taking of the taking chance, and the loan repayment. And I, this is this is what this is the <coughs> big, the sort of the the big thing that I when I'm speaking to Jim Flaherty, I say this: the default in payment to the CFDC is better than that of the charter bank. What does that mean? That means that most of the CFDC from the other stuff uh, know who they're only to. Uh, and that's why we've had uh, a refund of Fed debt now for the next five years. I truly believe that as long as we need a federal uh, agencies like that, uh, you'll be around by this government and you'll be funded. As I say, five years, uh, there was a small reduction part of the Deficit Reduction Action Plan. But investments in our CFDCs, and in particular, Tranval and our <coughs> CFDCs, are at a historic high. And I want to thank you and, and all the people that work there and your board of directors for doing a good job. Thank you for that. And thanks we forget the really good stories. Any other questions? Yes. I was just wondering, uh, I just wanted to get, uh, you were saying at the very beginning that we're in economic trouble and trouble finances. Well, some people are saying it's too optimistic. Uh, I think that you know we'll know by 2015, 2016. Uh, but all the indices are. If you take let's let's take a look at Canada's position. I, I purposely left this out because I brought this up at the budget uh, at our uh, budget consultations, and we had some charts. I, I suppose I should have brought them. But we have a lot of positives going for this country. Take the Take the very positive attitude that you're saying that the government has, and maybe it's unrealistic, but the OECD has said that of all the G7 countries, 
we are going to be in the best position in the future. We will have the strongest economic growth of all the G7 members. Uh, and the OEDC, the OEDC is, has, has said basically the same thing. So, so don't believe us. Don't believe the government of Canada if you, if you don't wish to. But these are, these are organizations outside of Canada that are saying good things uh, and, and, and saying very positive things. So, yes, we are in trouble times. Yes, a bad thing could happen. Yes, you know, the rest of the world, we could all go into double dip. Uh, there's nothing for certain. But the obligation on governments are to, are to make projections into the future. And I think our projections are pretty close because they are made in combination with the private sector, private sector economists. And they all indicate, to one degree or another, to half a percent or the other, a growth. We have had steady growth in, in Canada, whereas in the rest of the G7, with the exception of the United States and Germany, have all had negative employment, <coughs> meaning fewer jobs. So 950,000 net new jobs since the death of recession is, should be celebrated. It is celebrated by the rest of the world. It's, you know, we want to run around with a dark cloud over our head. We can do so. You want, I always say that to the people like yourselves who are the engine that drives our economy. Do you go into your business every day thinking of the worst case scenario? Or do you go in there with a positive attitude, uh, invigorating the people that work with you and for you and saying, you know, if we all put our nose to the grindstone, things will, you know, we'll expand and grow our business? Of course that's what you say. And that's what the government's saying, you know. The indices here are good. The rest of the world says we're heading in the right direction. Let's all put our nose to the grindstone. Let the government make it possible for you, the citizens of this country, and in particular the small business people, to drive and grow our economy like you've been doing, like the positive attitude, or like the, the positiveness. And when, if you want the gloom and doom, yes, we have a deficit, and yes, we have a debt. But our debt to GDP ratio is less than that of all of the G, the average of the G7. Uh, I think the average is around 80% of GDP. Ours is somewhere in the mid 30s of GDP. Uh, I can think, uh, I read some statistics recently that Japan's is about 180% of GDP. So, yes, there is some negativity. There is negativity out there. Yes, there. It is an unstable, unsure world. But at the same time, yes, we've been doing uh, very well compared to our competition. Do you, do you project a higher GDP in 2014, 2015 that could help reach you? Well, that's the whole intent behind the budget. We hope, we hope it's higher. We're, we're planning on that. But if it isn't, we'll take the necessary measures uh, as a government to, to make sure that we do get to where we want to go. Any other questions? Right here. Yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, regarding the infrastructure investment, um, Ontario Chambers is uh, is supporting this investment and, and, and the idea of an infrastructure investment, but they're focusing on um, the GTA and Hamilton areas. What are we doing in Northumberland to get some of this investment out our way, or what can we do as chambers to assist you to get some of this investment? Well, let's, let's talk about uh, some of the investments we keep at. Through previous economic action plans, all you have to do, let me give you some, some examples. It's a combination of gas tax because that's built into the, into the infrastructure. Um, during the economic action plan, I, let's, go, let's ratchet back a little further. When I was in my previous <coughs> job uh, and attending county council meetings, one of the concerns the county council had was when we have a detour off the 401, that heavy truck traffic uh, is really hard on our county roads. And so we had to strengthen the county roads. You had to put you know, thicker pavement, do some improvements there. Uh, and that's what we've done. And if you've driven the county roads, as I know many of you have, I know you're a frequent, <laughs> frequent GTA and, and back here. Uh, uh, so you've seen improvements. We just recently made, uh, made an announcement uh, and an investment uh, with the province of Ontario on the 401 uh, bridge, uh, an overpass, I think they refer to it as an underpass, uh, very close to Port Hope, get exactly where it is, and one in Trenton. Uh, if you take a look at our county roads, those that, that were about seven or eight years that request from the county council, they now have re that detour road, uh, 
uh, going up uh, County Road 45 and then over by Castleton. That's all been repaved and thickened because of investment, infrastructure investments. If you look around Coburg, uh, and over the last uh, four or five years, you've seen, uh, you saw the economic action plan. Well, that was to tell you that those infrastructure dollars are being spent right here in Northumberland and Kitty West. Uh, and we'll continue to do that. And as I said, one of the things that we've done is we've taken that, what was a temporary gas tax rebate, we enshrined it into law so no government in the future can do away with that gas tax though coming back to Parliament and changing the law. And in this budget, what we did was we indexed the gas tax rebate to inflation. Again, going back to when I was first elected, one of the things, all the, one of the commitments that all of the candidates made, that whoever, whoever, was, whoever the winner would be, we were all going to come, I'm pointing to the county council, but it used to be over there in William, that we were going to go in and make a commitment to agriculture. So we all did attend. And uh, in 2006, I was elected the member, and I made a commitment. When I was there, uh, the warden or one of the councillors, I believe it was Peter Galanti, said to me, he said, Rick, these one-time temporary federal government investments in our community are nice, but we as a municipality, we municipality, we can't plan, we can't do our budget, we can't do our five-year forecasts with these temperatures. So I brought that message to Ottawa. So we, we've now made it permanent, and what did the FCM, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, as well as, uh, as, well as the Ontario, uh, the, uh, all the acronyms there, the Ontario Federation of Municipalities, it's, it's wrong. <coughs> they have said the same thing, uh, and they've all come out right after the budget, I have them told somewhere in my, uh, in my iPad, they've all said that the time and the budget consultations, they said, should be tied, uh, indexed to inflation because that, for I think Northumberland County, it's $2.3 million per year from the gas tax. And each municipality gets an additional amount of money. That that's less and less to the county over the years because of inflation. So what we've done in this budget is we've tied it to inflation. So so we've actually, we, we've listened. We've, and the Federation of Canadian Municipalities have said this budget is good for them. Uh, and so has the Ontario organization. So is it perfect? Is it, does it give everybody everything? Who gets everything they want? Because it's all your dollars. Government doesn't have any money. It only has your money. It's the question is, how do you take those precious resources and make sure that they make the economy better? And I hope that answered your question. And there is going to be huge dollars. No, no federal government, since you do go to Trump, has invested more money in the GTA than this government. And we'll continue to do so. You just saw the recent announcement for the subway that uh, is going to. I'd, I'd be frank with you. I don't pay a lot of attention to the GTA. I pay more attention to what happens here in our company. Uh, but, but we did have our minister there making those investments. So are we going to continue with those investments? You bet. But uh, thank you for mentioning that. And since we did have a discussion at our breakfast table, I'm going to congratulate <coughs> our district chamber of commerce for, for the meetings and the programs that you have, encouraging the local businesses to make the most of the hundred million dollars per year over the next ten years in this area by the whole level radioactive is clean up. If you business folks don't take the maximum advantage of that, you're missing a golden opportunity. Federal government's making huge investments in this community. It's your job now to maximize that, to figure out how, and the Fort Hope and District Chamber of Commerce is going to help you with that, and they already are, is how we can maximize the economic benefit. We've seen the almost $1 billion investment at CFD Trenton, uh, and the tremendous, I can go there and I can I can point to signage there and businesses there, and I'm at the risk of missing some, I won't mention who they are, but I think you do know, from this area, from West Northumberland, that's actually, <coughs> that have contracts there, that are employing people there, carpenters, electricians, that investment is paying dividends here. <coughs> We've got to maximize those, and thank you for doing that. Yes, Lynn. I just, uh, 
want to thank the government for number one putting in that new charitable tax credit, which will hopefully increase uh, charitable giving to uh, many charities in our community. I see Megan McDonald's here from Habitat, and also the HPS uh, money, the homelessness partnering strategy. We've had a number of groups here locally benefit from that, including Greenwood, the Health Center, Cornerstone, and Transition House. So that money is. Uh, uh, very much appreciated, and uh, we are I'm glad to see that that's going to continue to flow because it's important. Thank you, Linda, and thank you for all your good work tonight. I see you wearing your rotary pen there. <laughs> one of the examples and one of the change changes, and we'll have to see where it goes, of course, we're merging CETA with, uh, with foreign affairs. Uh, but one of the things we want to do, we want to do with our foreign investment in, uh, in people around the world, our aid, in other words, I like to call it an investment, but our aid, is the example I love to use, of being a Rotarian, is the one for three. For every dollar that Rotary collected for the, uh, for the eradication of polio, uh, the federal government encouraged uh, by and for and a whole bunch of other things, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So every one dollar that was contributed amounted to three. That's, that's something that I would, I think, and I know the government would like to replicate. Uh, our foreign, you know, in the past, we used to give money and food uh, to regimes that used that money and food uh, as a tool uh, to reward the people that supported it and to punish the people that didn't. And what we're doing with our foreign aid is we're saying we want to make sure that it gets to the people it should. There are many non-government organizations who deliver aid with a very, very low, and in some cases, almost no overhead. Well, these are the organizations that, and if they're out there feeding people, or better still, teaching people how to feed themselves, those are the people that we want to encourage that through our federal aid dollars. And we want to tie it, quite frankly, uh, quite, quite frankly, to our, uh, uh, to our foreign policy. And that is those nations that share the same values, we're encouraging them to respect human rights. Uh, and, and so we're moving in that direction. So thank you for not only your work with the United Way. You know, when you were talking about investments in our community, United Way now has uh, now has a wonderful home. And that was uh, that was in part due to the, uh, to the federal and provincial governments. Uh, and uh, we want to continue to partner with federal, provincial, and municipal governments, because if we all share our limited resources, we get a lot more done. Yes? I just wanted to also build on what Linda said, and to thank both you and um, the Conservative government for the recognition of Habitat for Humanity and what they do nationally, and the, the reinvestment in the investment for affordable housing. So we're, we're, we're very thrilled to hear that. Well, thank you, and uh, it's deserved. We don't, we don't deserve the credit you do. Yes. I have a question. To make sure I understand you correctly, uh, the gas tax uh, to municipalities will be indexed to inflation. On the front end, for the purchase, there will be indexed to inflation as well. Which? The pump. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let me answer. Let me answer this way. Uh, we have reduced uh, gas gas prices. And you say, well, how did you do that? Well, we reduced the GST by two percent. GST is on gas, right? So we already have reduced the, the gas, you know, the gas prices. In addition to that, in addition to that, uh, to help people pay for the gas, we reduced about 150 various taxes for the average family of four in Canada. Uh, there has been a reduction in their personal income tax, in their family taxes, by about $3,200 per year. We are at the lowest <coughs> tax rate for families in about the last 40 to 50 years. Actually. So, no, we haven't. We're not. We're not interfering in the private sector with the price of gas. But what we did do is we're taking less tax dollars out of the price of gas. We have for several years, and whatever money we are making, we're turning back over to municipalities or a portion of that back over to municipalities and we're now indexing it. <laughs> okay, well
thank you very much, and once again, thank you to the Chambers, and thank you all for being here. And if any other questions come up during the day, uh, or during the weeks ahead, uh, feel free to call my office, and we'll be only too happy to answer those questions.